Welcome back to Living Local. Interest in bird watching gained momentum during the pandemic, and new data shows birding is not just a fad. With spring here now, folks will find even more feathered friends in their backyards. Here to talk to us about that today is Tim Murphy from the Quad City Audubon Society, and he's joining us in studio with some information about how we can kind of help the birds out habitat wise. Mm -hmm. Tim, thanks for coming on. You in. bet. Reasonably hit. All right, so let's talk first about, uh, broadly speaking, how can we create a, a bird-friendly habitat okay. in our own yards? When I think about bird-friendly habitat, I think about three main components. Okay. I think about cover, I okay. think about food, and I think about water. And if you have those three things in the Quad Cities, you're probably gonna, you're assured of having birds. Cover as in like trees and, and bushes and Tr things like that? Trees, shrubs, bushes. Um, Brush piles, leaves, okay. you know, anything that can provide cover, but yes. Okay. But if you have a ravine, you have cover. Oh, this is it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so cover, food, and water. So specifically on the food types of thing, um, what are some different types of bird feeders that people can purchase or should use? Okay, so in my feeder setup, I have a f a several. I have a okay. platform feeder, which I fill with sunflower seeds, and it has a big enough shelf, in, if you will, that birds like cardinals and blue jays can sit on that and eat. And then I have tube feeders that have purchase, small yep. purchase, yep. and those perches allow chickadees and titmouse and those things to eat. And I feed sunflower seeds in one, and I feed Niger thistle seed in the other for the goldfinch. I also feed a suet block for woodpeckers and a bunch of peanut rejects for woodpeckers as well. Okay, yeah, let's talk about types of types of feed here. Um, what types of birds go where? So if somebody's going into the store and they're going, you know, for the bags of bird feed, what should they be thinking about? Okay, well, if you just want to be a generalist, uh -huh. sunflower seeds are really great. Okay, I everybody mean, likes just, those. I just, every bird likes sunflower seeds and I like sunflower seeds. Awesome. A lot of people substitute safflower for sunflower or mix them together and that's fine too. Uh, for my point of view, thistle seed is a must for your goldfinches. Let's say, listen, we're going to get the state bird of Iowa in here, so we right. got to go for that. Okay, so for the people, or for the birds, not the people, the, the people are coming back here too. Um, <laughs> for the birds that are migratory and they're coming here back here this spring, what are some good feeders for them? Okay, so I've decided that when spring comes along, I put out the Oriole feeder. Uh -huh. And this is kind of a cool thing. It's got little pegs that you put orange halves on. Okay. And then it has a little top that you fill with grape jelly. Okay. And the Baltimore and Baltimore Orioles just love grape jelly, as do other birds. So this is a really good thing to put up about May 1st. Oranges and jelly. Oranges okay. and jelly. And then also May 1st is when you start feeding for your hummingbirds. And your hummingbirds, this gets about half filled with uh, th four parts water, uh -huh. one part sugar, uh -huh. and you, I just keep this on a shepherd's hook, and it's up year-round. Yep. The hummingbirds just love coming to that. Oh, awesome. Okay, so as far as those birds are concerned, how long are they usually around here then? Okay, so the Orioles and the Grosbeaks come around May 1st, and in my yard anyway, after the first couple of weeks of May, they seem to go away. I mean, I know they can breed here, but they don't seem to come to the feeders much. The hummingbirds, however, and I take them down. The hummingbirds, however, are prolific feeders, and I keep mine up as into fall, you know, into frost, basically, because they're migrating through and using this for their fall migration. I was going to say, I, my parents have a hummingbird feeder, and I've seen them pretty late into the season before, right. you know, especially, you know. Yeah, days. even through frost. Awesome, awesome. That is great information. That's awesome. Okay, so Tim, before we go, you have some events that the Audubon Society here in the Quad Cities has coming up to tell us about, too, right? Right. Yeah, I, yes. So uh, we have field trips and we have programs. And um, the, you go to our website, mm -hmm. quadcityaudubon.org, and you'll find them listed. But in April, we're going to go to Cone Marsh, which is uh, for waterfowl and for shorebirds. And we'll be doing build a bird feeders. And we're going to be doing a trip to uh, Illinois Park in May. So mm -hmm. there's a variety of places to go, free to the public. Anyone can attend. You don't have to be a member. Awesome. Tim Murphy with the Quad City Audubon Society. Thank you so much for joining us you today, bet. Tim. Really informative. And if you're interested in birds and would like to learn more about the group, like Tim mentioned, their website is quadcityaudubonsociety.org. We'll also have those details posted on our website, too, at ourquadcities.com.